All right. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. That's the I, car uh... call. Just pulling out of the drive. Get it. Remember, we need them healthy enough to answer questions. 1247, Sorry Detective for, Phelps requesting immediate backup in pursuit of a stolen green Kaiser Fraser from 6 West 2nd Street. Got to start my stream there. Lay into his wheel arches. Come on! Enough games, Phelps. Take this guy out. All right, all right. Maybe I was a couple miles over the speed limit. Get bracelets on him. Show me your hands. I'll call it in. Why did you run from us? I saw a big car in my rearview mirror with two tough guys bearing down on me. What would you do? What's your name? Cliff Harrison. You're under arrest. For what? What are you talking about? Nice try. I'm talking about the car being stolen. You're out of your mind. I bought the car, and I've got the paperwork to prove it. Looks like we'll have some questions for the people at Coombs Automotive. You purchased this car from Coombs Automotive Company? Yeah, that's right. And the ownership papers? Are from the same place. If this is a forgery, it's top notch. This will need to be traced. You have a criminal record, Mr. Harrison? No, nothing like that. You better give us something, Cliff, or we're gonna make this hard on you. I didn't steal the car. I ran because, <coughs> because I've got some wacky backy in the glove compartment. How much, Cliff? One reefer. We'll let it slide. You're in enough trouble. Who did you deal with at Coombs Automotive? The <coughs> owner, Richard Coombs. And he made out the bill of sale personally? Of course he did. He kept a facsimile for his records. Check with him. We're going to get to the bottom of this, Harrison. Until we do, you're going downtown. You've got to be kidding me. I'm getting arrested for buying a goddamn car? If everything is legit, Harrison, you'll be out soon. Until then, if I were you, I'd keep my mouth shut. Bag his possessions as evidence and have him arraigned for Grand Theft Auto. Right, detective. Do you know who my father is? We need to get to Coombs Auto and check out Harrison's story. You know what? I think he's telling the truth. Some of the most... Convincing people you will ever listen to are born liars. Usually they're called politicians. The paperwork all looked above board, and he seemed like a clean cut kid. Uh huh. Well, I get it now. You see some kid who's. Basically, you five years ago. Hold on, what was that? A Talbot GS. Don't assume he's got to be innocent. I'm more than happy to be proved wrong. Hey, if he'd been black or Hispanic, you'd be singing a different tune. You spout all this communist crap about treating everybody the same, but it only works one way. I'm not sure that's communism, Stefan. Oh, God, please. Not another history lesson from the man who single handedly won the war. Are you finished? Yes. I feel much better now. 
We'll shake down the car dealer and take it from there. Unless his daddy plays golf with yours, of course. In which case, we'll give him a firm... ...firm gentleman's handshake and be on our way. See? I knew you weren't finished. Not another step. I have got a Buick Century sedan that would be absolute. Detective Phelps, LAPD, are you the owner? That's right. Richard Coombs, at your service. You looking to trade in a black and white, boys? <laughs> Mr. Coombs, we're investigating an auto theft. A man by the name of Cliff Harrison claims he bought the car here. Well, uh, some people would say that my cars are a steal. That's a joke, son. Very amusing, Mr. Kuhn. I remember Harrison. It was a green two-tone Kaiser Fraser, if I remember rightly. Do you have the bill of sale? It's in my office. Walk this way. That's a joke, too, son. Mm. Phelps, you mind if I shoot this guy? He's getting on my nerves. Here it is. Got the original pink slip there, too. Gene Archer, 146 North Fremont Avenue. Harrison's purchase receipt was legit, at least. We have a couple of questions. All right, fellas. Shoot. Can you tell us how you came to buy the car? Girl just wandered in right off the street. Nothing unusual about the car. Not really my usual type of vehicle. The price was certainly right, though. Nice girl, but about as sharp as a bag of wet mice. Did you pay with check or cash? A check. She wanted it made out to cash, but I insisted. Man has to watch his cash flow. What name? I made it out to Gene Archer on the Bank of Arcadia. Can you describe this Gene Archer? Brunette, maybe 25, 26. A little on the plump side, but not bone ugly. What was your impression of her? Kind of harried and harassed, in a hurry to go somewhere but no place to go. You get to know the time. Do you know anything about the company that prints these pink slips? Nope. Should I? It isn't exactly my business. It says Marquee Printing. You've never heard of them? Marquee. Sure. They do all the government red tape. You'll find the place down on Aliso Street near San Pedro. When exactly did you hand over the check, Mr. Combs? Close of play on Friday. Why didn't you pay her cash? You knew the car was dirty. I had an inkling. When people are in a hurry for money, always pay by check, son. Gives you a couple days to back out. This was all above board. Yes, of course it was. Did this look legitimate to you, Combs? I'm in used cars, son, not bear bonds. In my business, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Now don't come on all high and mighty with me if you want my help. Thanks for your help, Mr. Coombs. We need to continue the investigation. Hope you sort out your problem with Mr. Harrison. Go easy on him, son. Boy's about as sharp as a bowling ball. He's built too low. The fastballs fly over his head. Let me shoot this guy, please. You have a pleasant day, Mr. Coombs. Well, Harrison might be off the hook, but we can still run an APB on Gene Archer. Get on the horn and call it in.
Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, detective? Requesting an APB on Gene Archer, age approximately 25, on suspicion of Grand Theft Auto. I'll relay the information. Messages, please. A James Velasco is being held at Central Station on suspicion of GTA. Possible link to the Harrison case. They're waiting on you to conduct the interview. Thank you. Here's a chicken and egg question for you. Do you think you have to be an asshole to sell cars? Or that selling cars turns you into an asshole? You've got it in for everyone today, haven't you? I've always got it in for car salesmen. Doesn't matter what day it is. And why do they always think they're comedians when they're about as funny as a heart attack? Maybe the more annoying they are, the quicker you sign on the dotted line, just to get the hell out of there. Empty. Should have known that Archer Broad would have given us a false address. We should go to the station, see what this Belasco guy has to say. Detectives, Velasco is prepped and ready in two. Another stolen car with legit papers. Thanks. Crummy bastard. James Velasco? I want a lawyer. It's my car and I got the proof right here. Take a look for yourself. is real enough, Belasco, but the car isn't yours. This pink slip is a forgery. Where were you taking the car, James? Blow it off, Greenhorn. You'll get nothing from me. You're a two-time loser. Shh, buddy. If you don't give me something, I'm gonna ask the <laughs> DA for the maximum. You're looking at ten years, Belasco. Kiss your youth goodbye. I, I want a deal. Keep talking, and we'll see what sort of deal you're worth. My job is to drive the cars out of state. Nevada, Arizona, sometimes New Mexico. With the paperwork they provide, it's normally a breeze. Does the name Gene Archer mean anything to you? Nope. Never heard of her. You're a liar, James. You have the same Say address. Say that again. I'm telling the truth. I don't know the broad. So that's why you both have the same address printed on your pink slips. She's a mule for these stolen vehicles, genius. Same as you. Jesus. All right, I know her. Stupidest broad I ever met. Always cooking up crazy schemes. I don't know why those guys use her. You happy now? What happens to the cars once they cross over the state lines? I don't know. I just deliver them. Give me something, Velasco. Or I'll take you back to the cells and tell the whole station you're a child molester. How long do you think you'll last? Okay, okay. I hear you. The cars get sold in Chicago or back east. 
Sometimes I bring back cars coming the other way. Where do you pick up the cars, Velasco? Warehouses. Mainly in the east downtown. An address, Velasco. You want my help with the DA? Cough it up, now. A place on Industrial Street. I don't know the number. You're gonna help me out, right? Keep talking, kid. We'll see what we can do. All right, James. We're gonna check if this information is worth anything. And if it is, I need your help here, pal. If it is, then we'll know you're a man of your word. And so will the DA. You're Phelps, right? Yes, I am. Look, can we do this later? I'm in the middle of it. Ray Pinker. I'm with Technical <laughs> Services. The pink slips are all real. Yes, we know that. There's only one company that prints them in California, the Marquee Printing Company. They've confirmed that the numbers are legitimate. You've checked them out? Sure. They're on Aliso Street, near the corner of San Pedro. The guy I spoke to was Lightvol, Gordon Lightvol. Here, I wrote it down. Thanks, Ray. This is a great lead. We'll get down there as soon as we can. Phelps, your GTA suspect, Gene Archer, spotted by a patrolman. Western Union office, 253 South Hill. Less than a minute away down the street if you run. Go! She won't hang around. Come on! We don't want to lose her! LAPD. So you gonna we'll take see it from here. God damn it. Everyone's against me. Look, just let me get my money and get out of here, okay? You look sweet. How about giving a girl a break? I could be very nice. I'm afraid I can't do that, Miss Archer. Stefan, call for black and white. Just my luck to get the only hair sure cop in the LAPD. The car you sold to Coombs was stolen, Miss Archer. There won't be any money. I handed over all the right paperwork when I sold it, Buster. Gene, you've blown open the whole operation because you were dumb enough to try to sell one of the cars. What do you think they're going to do to you? Give me something. I was just doing what they do. They pay me 50 bucks to drive the car. I made two grand selling it. You made zero. And if they catch you, you're dead. Is that all your life's worth? Look, a girl needs things. I don't see you looking out for me. How long have you and Belasco been delivering cars? Who is James Belasco? You're lying. James Belasco. I don't remember mentioning his first name, Miss Archer. Oh, I... Well, I think you did, didn't you? Well, I'm sure of it. Anyway, I don't know him. You aren't sharp enough to lie to me, Gene. You and James Belasco share the same address on your pink slips. We have him in a cell. Okay, so I know the creep. The pink slips are real. The home addresses are always vacant lots. Bigelow is always boasting that the paperwork is legit and that if we stick to our stories... And don't try and sell the car? Yeah, that too. Tell me where you picked up the car, Miss Archer. Look, I, I can't remember. Let me go, will you? Please. What have I got to do? Trying my patience here, Gene. I'll have the reporters down here and have your picture in all the papers. You'll have nowhere to run. All right already. I get the message. I pick up the cars from a guy named Bigelow. 58 Industrial Street. Big warehouse full of goons. Now you've got what you want. Can I go? Please? No, you sure can. We've got a car waiting outside for you. Some career advice, Gene. Get out of crime. Marry someone boring who has money and will find you captivating. Is this guy for real? He takes a little getting used to, but yeah, he generally means what he says. <clears throat> All right.
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, she's kind of stupid. Like, <laughs> it's funny when... It's funny when the uh, people that you watch, like, you actually just watch, like... Let's go to the marquee place first. Uh, <clears throat> the place that, like, you watch their, their movements and stuff like that, like, you watch... You watch them, uh... You watch them, like, their facial stuff. and right, or Even how she said, she goes, her like, own way. She, she goes, like, <laughs> she said that, she said her first name. Like, I never said the first name. Stupid. Stupidity. Just stupidity. Makes my job really easy. Little did she know her feminine charms were useless against the impenetrable Cole Phelps. She's not my type. And what is your type, Phelps? I'm married. I'm It just makes it super easy. It's, uh, San Pedro. That? But you're not blind or dead inside, are you? Wait. Scrap that second half of the question. Uh, I don't know. Blondes, I guess. Hallelujah! The man is human after all! Now we're getting somewhere. Yep, I'm with you on the blondes. But that's fine, too. And there's nothing wrong with a good redhead. <laughs> but I draw the line at gray. You know what? I might have to lift that embargo soon in the interest of maintaining a free market. A man with high standards. The standards are only <laughs> as high as the last glass of whiskey. All right. What can I do for you, gentlemen? I'm a traffic detective from Central Division. Who's in charge here? I am, Gordon Lightfall. What's this about? We understand that your company prints California vehicle titles. Yes, I have the government contract to print pink slips. I've done for some years. Have you had any goods or equipment stolen recently? We're running up against stolen cars with seemingly legitimate paperwork. Not recently. Have you ruled out forgery? There's no shortage of talented artists in this town. We'll keep it in mind. All right. We have some questions for you, Mr. Lightball. Mr. Lightball, we're currently working two auto theft cases. Do you know anything about a car theft ring? Uh, certainly not. Why would I get mixed up in a thing like that? He knows something. We have suspects with legitimate pink slips that were printed here, Lightfall. You better give me something before I bring the whole department down here. Don't be hysterical, detective. As a matter of fact, we had a similar problem a couple of years ago. A number of used car lots were selling blank documents to a criminal organization. <laughs> Do the names Cliff Harrison and James Belasco mean anything to you? No, they do not. Harrison bought his car from Coombs. The pink slip looks good, and that points the finger here. Do you have any employee trouble? No, I don't. They've all been carefully screened. Look, now that I think about it, the name Coombs sounds familiar. I think they may have been involved in stolen documents in the past. Hmm. Okay. Do you have a delivery ledger, Mr. Lightfall? We would like to cross-check against the Coombs Automotive Emporium. It's a little out of the ordinary, Detective. Uh, I'm not sure I can share those sorts of records. Hand it over, Lightfall. Okay. You don't want us having bad thoughts about you, do you? Very well. But this really is irregular. Over here. Hmm. Look for patterns, recurring names, unusual addresses, anything out of the ordinary. You certainly encourage repeat business, Lightball. 
This Mr. Bigelow is a good customer. Sorry to bother you, sir. We'll let you know if there are any developments. Who else did he sell to? <clears throat> huh, okay. People just pull out in front of you like crazy. Like it's <laughs> Give me. <clears throat> do do do. Guns out already. Maybe we should call for a couple of black and whites. Get Fleischer down here. I thought you Marines were gung ho, Cole. You have a 45. Don't you ever want to use it? I'll take the back. Just give me a few seconds to get around there. He did not have to jump over that. LAPD, all of you are coming downtown with me. Throw out the guns. down let's clear the top floor I don't want to get drilled in the back on the way out oh yeah <laughs> stay in cover <laughs> try the door at the end I heard something. All right, all right, don't shoot! Keep your hands up. Watch him, Bukowski. He doesn't move until I've tossed this place. There are enough slips here to keep them stealing cars till Christmas.
Marquee Printing Company. <laughs> There's nothing like going direct to the source. A betting slip. Looks like Mr. Lightfall has been on a losing streak. We've got a trail of pink slips and stolen cars that leads right to your door, Bigelow. You're in this up to your neck, but I don't think you're the man in charge. Make it easier on yourself. Give him up. I had to work on cars for customers. You charge in here shooting up the place like it's the Ballad of Bulge. I can't give you anything. All right. We know about Marquee Printing. You can make this easier on yourself by giving us your man on the inside. I sometimes repair cars and put them back on the road. I need a pink slip to resell them. There's no problem there. <laughs> there are at least four dead men in this warehouse. A couple more. Punks won't make for that much extra paperwork. We'd be doing the legal system a favor. Okay, okay, tough guy. I get the message. Lightfall. The guy who runs Marquis. He's the big shot. He likes to spend big at the track. He owes people. Lightfall. The guy with no luck at the track. Tell me about him. It's one of the guys lying over there. You're right. He has no luck. That's the best lie you can come up with, Bigelow? Hey, would I lie to you, detective? I'm not exactly in a good position here now, am I? The deliveries. Gordon Lightball owns Marquee Printing, a government print shop. He's losing big at the track. He has these big government contracts. He's in hock over 20 grand. If the feds find out, the contracts will be all over. Lightball plays mm. ball. <laughs> all right, Bigelow. The heat is off you. Play your cards right, and you'll be able to count your time in Quentin on one hand. Nice. Hell yeah, back back to the printing shop. Let's arrest that mother trucker. Sorry, I don't even know why I said trucker. Motherfucker! Out of the way. Oh. Oh. That's why it didn't disappear right away. So back out to the road and straight up. What a mess. Ugh, gonna take some cleaning up, that's for sure. I wish it hadn't gone that way. Well, you shouldn't bring guns to work with them. We didn't have a lot of choice. You have to admire the bare-faced cheek of someone who tries to blow your brains out one minute and pleads innocence the next. Yeah, especially when he's surrounded by evidence. You know, guys like Bigelow spend so much time convincing themselves that they're not doing anything wrong that they actually start to believe their own bullshit. They get sloppy. Bigelow, Lightball, all of them. If they hadn't, who knows how long they could have kept this racket going. Complacency or greed. It's always one of the two that brings them down. He's not wrong. Like, criminals are like... <laughs> Can we try to get there in one piece? Is that wrong though? Like, uh, complacency. These criminals that I've seen, like stuff around, like complacency is greed. Like, if you're trying to steal something and they get, they can easily get away with it if they just left. But they have to go back for one more piece or one more thing or just a little more greed. It, one of those things that just, yeah. You're under arrest. You again? This harassment is starting to wear thin. We found a box of pink slips in a warehouse full of hot cars. You signed for them, Lightball. I signed for all the orders and deliveries. 
You'll need something better than that, cowboy. <laughs> Save it, Lightval. We already have all we need to send you down. I've had enough of this. You either produce some shred of proof, or I call my attorney. You're in the hole with the organization. We know about the debts, Lightball. I agree, I have a small problem. I'm prepared to help you in any way I can, Detective. I'll name names. Uh, I need you to keep this out of the paper. I need- You need to shut up now, Lightball. Gordon Lightball, I'm charging you with conspiracy and fraud. Hands behind your back. Nice. The LAPD Central Traffic Division has today smashed a nationwide auto theft ring, writes crime correspondent, blah, blah, blah. Oh, here it is. Traffic squad detectives confronted a large group of armed thugs. After an exchange of gunfire, more than a dozen dead criminals were removed from the scene. The LAPD sustained no casualties. Damn fine work, Phelps. Now get out there and nail some more bad guys, will you? I want to finish reading this. I like how he just gives all the credit to our character instead of Bukowski at all. Like, Bukowski doesn't do anything. <laughs> Hell yeah. Right, Carter. My family runs a shipping business in San Francisco. We used to have two ships a week to Tokyo. We've been in shipping for two generations, Hank. I've never been on a voyage anywhere. I feel like Odysseus in the beginning of his journey. The Odyssey took ten years, Cole. This is the American century. America can rule the world after we win this war. We need to stay alive, Cole. These men are counting on us. If you're what the veterans are saying to each other, no. Golden Gate in 48. That's four more hard years of fighting. Hmm. Before the next one gets going, I'm going to grab a... Uh... I'm going to grab something to drink quick. I'll be right back.
Phelps, Bukowski, <sighs> you have a new case. Two women, possible drink drive. How was that a case? The broad says she was doped and that somebody tried to kill her. Where did this take place? Hmm. That's the bitch you're gonna love. Right across the street. What? A Chevy style line took a nosedive off the escarpment, fetched up underneath a Cola King billboard. Up to it, boys. We got bad guys to catch. He's door knocking all morning. But I gotta make in the car. See you later, fellas. Try not to work too hard. Look at you bantering with the boys. There's a tear to my eye watching my caterpillar grow wings. I'm just trying to fit in. Educated, hardworking, straight as an arrow. I hate to break it to you, Cole, but you'll never fit in at Central. Stop just ahead. Her face looks familiar. Well, that's June Ballard, <laughs> Tarzan's sister, beast of the Amazon. She's married to Guy McAfee. The captain has moved to Vegas now, but the two of them still have juice. Phelps, traffic. Detective Phelps. Hey, Bukowski. Long time no see. You could have called this in by megaphone, Enrique. <laughs> Phelps, this is Enrique Gonzalez. Enrique was a pretty decent middleweight. What do we have, Gonzalez? Broad drives right through the empty lot and off the side of the escarpment. Her story is that a movie producer <clears throat> doped her and her friend and sent the car over the cliff. Was anyone hurt? Driver's beat up. Not too bad, considering if she hadn't hit that billboard, we'd be scraping both of them off the pavement. Passengers are Jessica Hamilton. She's just a kid. Pretty knocked around. Kid gonna be all right? I think so. They've taken her to Central Receiving. If you want to take a look around, install the ambulance. Thanks. Do that. One more thing. Watch out for the driver. She cuts rough. This ain't the red car. Uh, if you're looking for the coroner, he's down by the crash site. You want to see this, Phelps? There, laid out on the trunk. And that isn't even the best part. Oh, nice. They've been torn off. Where did you find them? They were stuffed in the young lady's handbag. I'll run a trace for semen when I get back to the lab. Oh, she's from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Sweet. I am also from Wisconsin, not from Milwaukee, but um. All right, dear Jesse, please, please, dear, come home. If you're not, if you're worried about, if you're worried about your father, don't be. All is forgiven. Home. He has a hot temperature. He has a hot temperature. He can be very proud, but you're still a little his little girl, and he loves you. I know he didn't mean those things he said. You're a good, decent girl, dear. And you're not made for Hollywood. I was 15 once myself. I wanted to be just like Carla Bo and wear lovely dresses and kiss hands on men. But once I grew up and married your father, I realized I would never, I would never have been happy in that life. You'll realize it one day too. I'm sure Aunt June's looking after you. Junie, Jeannie's looking after you. But I can't help help worrying. You know what your old mother like. Your old mother's like. The world is a very dangerous place for young girls, especially ones with stars in their eyes. Stars are nice to look at, but sometimes they can blind you to what's right in front of your nose. Emma and Molly miss you awfully. Emma's getting so pretty now, and little Molly is bright as a button, just like you were at her age. They need their big sister to look out for them. 
Dear, dear Jesse, please come back. It's frightened for you. I'm frightened for you. I can't help feeling something terrible is going to happen. I cry for you every night. Your loving mother, Camille Hampton. All right. Drunk driver? Maybe not. How so? Well, a head I found without a body piqued my interest. See what you think. <laughs> Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. <clears throat> Is it real? No. I think it's supposed to be a replica of an Indian shrunken head. It's some kind of curio or movie prop. See the casting marks? Huh. What's it made from? Plaster of Paris would be my first guess, then painted. So we can rule out the murder angle? No, you can rule that in. That thing was wedging the accelerator to the floor. Whoever did it wanted these women dead. Huh. You catch all the good ones, Phelps. How does someone manage to tip their ride straight off a cliff? If the driver's in a fit state, we should ask. Hmm. Mrs. McAfee, we would like to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. I prefer to use my maiden name, June Ballard. You might be familiar with some of my work. Can you tell us what happened here? You're kind of cute for a cop. Maybe a bit on the serious side. What about me, June? I'm a big fan of beasts. You? Beast of I don't like. Keep out of this. Huh. We understand that you're still suffering from the effects of the accident, Mrs. McAfee. The officer says that you claim that you were drugged. Who did this to you? That rat slipped us a Mickey Finn. It's no wonder I feel so dopey. I can't remember. It's a serious offense to withhold information from the police during a criminal investigation, madam. I told you to call me June. You're making me feel like an old lady. And don't bother your handsome head about this. My husband will settle the score with Mark Bishop. A, a B-movie actress. <laughs> what can you tell us about the passenger in your car? Jessica Hamilton. Poor Jessica. It's been a rough day for her. She's... Desperate to break into movies. What more can I say? I think you're lying, Mrs. McAfee. I think something happened to Jessica yesterday before the crash. I'm offended, Sunshine. Do you have any proof? Her underwear's ripped. Miss Hamilton's underwear were physically <laughs> torn from her body. She wanted to go to a casting. I took her to a casting. Whatever happened after that is between her and Mark Bishop. You mentioned a Mark Bishop. You think he might have had something to do with this? He is a movie producer. As for his involvement, you just leave it to me and my husband to worry about. I want to know what happened between you two that made him want to commit a double murder. Bishop offered me a part in his picture. Then he withdrew it. Fact is, we had a deal. I pressed him on it, and this is where I end up. We found a shrunken head. It was used to tamper with your car. You see, I normally don't drive off cliffs. The last thing I remember is getting behind the wheel. I doubt it. It's obviously some I kind of movie doubt prop. It. You must know where it came from. In case you hadn't noticed, I am the talent. And the talent doesn't deal with props or sets or any of that kind of stuff. 
Why don't you ask Mark Bishop which prop house he uses? Mrs. McAfee, I think it would be in everyone's best interest if you accompanied Patrolman Gonzalez back to the receiving hospital. I'm going to be okay. These guys can take me home after my lawyer and I have talked to the news house. Mrs. McAfee, you are still under the influence of narcotics, and you're likely to go into shock once the drugs wear off. And I thought you were a heel. It's nice of you to be concerned. I think we're good here. Let's go see what we can shake out of the kid. Okay, buddy. Hey, Carter. Carter. Why don't you go into your room and get your water bottle? Yeah, of course. Eleven K Roger, en route. Detective Phelps, here to interview a Jessica Hamilton. Jessica Hamilton. Oh, yes. She's in the room right behind you, Detective. You can't hold me here. No! I don't Feeling need to be manhandled by a doctor. I need my a lawyer. Hey, my head's still where is the way. telephone? Do you know who I am? Not everything here is going to be relevant. Hello, Jessica. Uh, my name is Cole Phelps. I'm a policeman. I'd like to talk to you about your accident, if that's okay. Um, okay. Can you tell me what you remember about the crash? It's all kind of fuzzy. I remember waking up here. Nothing happened yesterday. Clearly something happened Tell the yesterday truth, Jessica. underwear would be ripped at Why you. the big cover-up? I'm not lying to you. We found your underwear in your handbag, Jessica. You need to tell us what happened. The doctor told me what happened. I... I didn't want that. I just wanted to be a star, to be in movies. I told Junie what happened, and she told me to toughen up. That that was the price of stardom. Did she now, cold-hearted bitch? It's not Junie's fault. It's not my first time. I had a boyfriend back home, but my father found out about him. Even if you consented, Jessica, you're still underage. We need to get in touch with your parents, <laughs> Jessica, to tell them what has happened. Oh, you don't need to worry them. They sent me along to stay with Aunt June. They trust her to take care of me. You're lying, Jessica. How are we going to make this right if you lie to us? Please, Detective, why would I lie to you? Because you're a runaway, Jessica, and you don't have your parents' permission to be here. Now, do you want to tell me what really happened? I went with Junie to this strange place. It's difficult to remember. Someone gave me a drink to calm my nerves, and then I felt faint. I think I must have passed out. How did you meet Mr. Bishop? Well, Junie is a big movie star. You probably know that. She's doing a new movie. What's the story with Bishop and Mrs. McAfee? Why does he want the two of you dead? That can't be true. Mr. Bishop seemed very happy today. I mean, yesterday. 
and that's why he wedged a shrunken head against the accelerator pedal and punted the two of you over an escarpment? I overheard Junie speaking to him on the phone a couple of times. Screaming, really. She can be very hard sometimes, Junie. But they seemed okay yesterday, like they worked it out. I know what happened to you, Jessica. Where exactly did it take place? Please, it's scary. It's really difficult to think of anything. Jessica, I really need you to help me here. I remember the mermaid. Was the mermaid in the movie too? No, it was on the front of a building. We pulled up in front of the mermaid. Thank you, Jessica. You've been a big help. Here's my card. If you think of anything or you need some help, just get in touch, okay? Okay. I think it might be a good idea if you went back home till you felt better, Jessica. I couldn't do that, officer. What if I got the part and I wasn't there? When can I get out of here? It's the tale of this town, Cole. Lambs that go willingly to slaughter. Who the hell is that? Must be her lawyer. He certainly expedited her release. I don't like it, Cole. Why is she in such a hurry? We should follow her. There she goes. Come on. Ballard is definitely up to something. She seems to have made a remarkably speedy recovery. Get in there and see what she's up to. Don't you? Then make some calls. I'm going to be very clear about this. You get this done, or I'm. Wilson's Hotel. Mr. Mark Bishop, that son of a bitch, lives in apartment 803. Sure, I got the film. So what's the story? I'm guessing she didn't stop for light refreshments. She made a call. Sounds like Mark Bishop has a heap of trouble headed his way. I've got an address. Wilson's Hotel, apartment 803. 
Oh shit, you better step on it. If he's got any sense, he'll be as far away from home as possible. If he had any sense, he wouldn't have tried bumping off Guy McAfee's wife in the first place. Or he'd have done the job properly. McAfee will break a fella's legs just for looking at his broad the wrong way. What did you make of the kid? You believe her story? I think she was doped out of her tiny mind and given the casting couch. That fucking bitch Ballard sold her out. So if Ballard was doing someone a favor, why did they try to kill her? I tried to stop them. It's, it's room 803, left out of the elevator. Sounds like we're about to make it a hat trick of hysterical female witnesses. Give it up, LAPD! I'm about to break your goddamn jaw. Shouldn't have tangled. Are you injured, Mrs. Bishop? I'm all right now. Those horrible, awful men. Perhaps you should sit down, ma'am. Yes, yes. Forgive me, officers. I'm very flushed. I'll just sit down for a moment. That's perfectly normal, ma'am. Take a moment while we look around. Yes, thank you. Well, just look at this mess. have to do to earn twenty thousand dollars not much help Doesn't appear to be connected. Hmm. Don't think this is any use to us. I doubt it. Doesn't look like anything. Cowboys. Incidental.
This isn't what we're looking for. Looks like the old movie set downtown. Great Wall of Babylon, a replica of a replica. Not sure this means much. like we found our mermaid. Who are these men in the picture? My husband, Mark, and Marlon Hopgood. They work together on occasion. That's Hopgood's shop. Those men, I think they work for Guy McAfee. Do you know the name? No. Why should I? June Ballard is married to Guy McAfee. Have you heard of her? That slut. She's been badgering my husband for days. Mrs. McAfee alleges that your husband tried to kill her and her friend last night. I think you should tell us what you know. My husband's a movie producer. This has something to do with his new picture. He doesn't include me in his business. June Ballard said she had a deal to be in his new picture. Mark repeatedly told her no. He had Joan Leslie lined up for the role. That's how he got the finance. June made all kinds of threats. She was very rude to me. You know June Ballard? We were both on the same picture a few years back. That's how I met my husband. Where can we find your husband, ma'am? He told me he would be on set. That's all I know. Either we find him or McAfee's people do, Mrs. Bishop. If you care for him, you should make sure that we find him first. I do care for him. But I don't really know where he'd go if he were in trouble. Hopgood might oh. know. <laughs> Why is your husband paying Lorna Hopgood $20,000? Lorna? Marlon's ex-wife? Are you sure? Your husband looks like he's being blackmailed. They obviously have something on him if he's prepared to kill to cover it up. Why is the payment going to Hopgood and not McAfee? Lorna works at a check cashing place in Hollywood. You need to ask Hopgood why he needs that much money in cash. Your husband was at a casting yesterday with a young girl? Not that I know of. He told me he was looking at locations. The picture's been cast. Jessica remembered a mermaid. The mermaid on the front of the prop store. You better come clean with me. This is a sick town, Detective. Are you sure you really want to know? The truth is, my husband likes them young. And you think that's okay? I was 16 when I first met him. I thought he was a genius. A magician with film. I was 20 before I realized he was just a B-movie hack. But he's nothing compared to some of the monsters at these big studios. My guess is, Ballard sacrificed her little friend. Happens to a lot of girls. Your husband is in trouble. It could go easier for him if you were more helpful, Mrs. Bishop. He's a big boy, detective, and so are you. This is Hollywood. There's always a deal to be done. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, detective? I need a location on a silver screen prop store. 
Silver Screen Props, Corner 3rd and Figueroa. Thanks. All right. An aging movie star, a wannabe starlet, a movie producer's wife. They're finally rubbing shoulders with the almost rich and famous. And from the stories they've given us, clearly none of them can act. Mrs. Bishop. Knows more than she's letting on. She doesn't seem to realize how much trouble her husband is in. The LAPD are the least of their worries right now. Eh, you think she'd have gotten the hint after those hatchet man briefs decorated her apartment? Maybe she's just loyal. Or she's in on it. She didn't seem like your average giddy broad with nothing between the ears. Well, she might just be trying to buy enough time for Bishop to put a couple of oceans between him and McAfee. Phelps and Bukowski, LAPD. We are investigating the attempted murder of June Ballard and Jessica Hamilton. Oh, Christ! Uh, I'm Marlon Hopgood. How can I help? You hold castings here? How'd you hear about that? I got a little soundstage out back. Lead the way. Keep him here, Stefan. I'm gonna take a look around. What's this got to do with me? Don't try my patience, knucklehead. Turn off the lights, Hopgood. Why would I want to do that? Humor him. One-way mirrors. There's a room on the other side. Huh. Well, well. Find a way into that peep den, Phelps. I'll stay here and keep our pervert company. Doping a 15-year-old kid and abusing her in a screen test. What is wrong with these people? Can't be that way, Phelps. You couldn't fit a rat through there. Gotta be outside then. <sighs> Newspaper.
Listen, I uh, have to call you back. I got some business here. Sit down, Courtney. This is Mickey. Mickey, this is Courtney Sheldon. What would you like to do? <clears throat> Scotch. Straight up. I hear you're back at school learning to be a doctor, kid. Yes. That's right, Mr. Cohen. So you want to be a doctor and a dope peddler. <laughs> Interesting combination, huh? Do we have a problem, Mr. Cohen? We might have, yeah. Selling your dope to my boy Lenny looked like a good move, but Lenny has been supplying uh, wholesale, so to speak. The Bindle boys in this town aren't used to the juice without a little of the middleman taking his cut. Lenny promised that wouldn't happen, Mr. Cohen. And Lenny works for you. What can I say about Lenny? Let me think. Oh, yeah, he's a putz. And he's lazy, and he's greedy, but he's my wife's brother. <laughs> now can you make a cake with those ingredients, huh? Please. <laughs> so how is that my problem, Mr. Cohen? Well, kid, the only way we're going to be able to make this work is to do some repackaging. We need to get the dope out of those dinky little cardboard boxes and... Surrettes. Yeah, surrettes. Great. We can put it into a big vat to water it down a little bit. I won't bore you with the chemistry. It doesn't work that way. You're likely to kill even more people. Okay, listen, we want to buy you out, kid. I'll offer you 50 grand. Hey, hey, you don't like my offer? The Sheldon kid? I think I want him dead. Huh. Hmm. Mickey Cohen. This is where you sprang from. That wall's not real. Jesus. Jungle Drums, 8th and Francisco. Attention, Mark Bishop. What happened to the film of Hamilton's screen test? Poor kid.
Detectives. Johnny Goldberg. You work for Mickey C. That's right, detectives. You wouldn't happen to know the guys who roughed up Mrs. Bishop earlier today by any chance. No, no, not us. We don't do that kind of thing. It's the husband we'd like to talk to. This is a police matter. You don't want to be taken in for obstruction of justice, do you boys? You could try the obstruction rap, but uh, it won't stick. We could beat that. You've had your 10 cents worth, gentlemen. Bishop knows how the world works. Mrs. McAfee hits him up for a movie part. Happens every day. But Bishop takes it a step too far and tries to rub out Mrs. McAfee. Naturally, Guy is going to get upset. What made you think Bishop would be here? We figure he might be planning a little accident for Hopgood, too. Those two guys have got some unfinished business. You let us know if you find Bishop. Guy McAfee can be a very generous man. I'm only going to warn you once, gentlemen, to stay out of this. This is a police matter. We will be bringing Mark Bishop into custody. <laughs> At least he's polite. Kind of dumb, but polite. But I'm a lot less polite, you smug son of a bitch. So let me put it in ruder terms that even a pair of blockheads like you might understand. The only reason that you don't have bars on your windows already is because you're small fry. And we don't waste our time on small fry. You stay away from Bishop, and you stay away from me. Is that clear enough for you, asshole? Now run along back to your boss so we can pat you on the head and tell you what good boys you are. I don't think they like your little pep talk, Mikowski. Oh, shit! Let's see him chase us now. On to the movie set, Phelps. Let's roll. Oh, Christ. And they say working traffic is like watching paint dry. <sighs> you know how to piss people off. Mikowski. Hey, if they're prepared to gun down cops in broad daylight, McAfee really means business. Seems like we're the only ones who want Bishop alive. I have a good mind just to let him go work on the son of a bitch. I'm about done putting my life on the line to protect some child molester. That's our job, unfortunately. They don't get to dole out the justice. There's a slippery bastard now. No. God damn it! Mark Bishop, stop! LAPD! Get him, Phelps. I'll cover the exit. 11K calling KGPL, requesting assistance at 8 in Francisco, the abandoned movie set. My partner is... We're trying to help you, Bishop! Foot. Code 3. KGPL. This is all a big mistake! It's us or McAfee's boys. Your choice. I didn't do anything.
Bishop, that's enough. That girl made it all up. Don't make this any harder on yourself, Bishop. It's too Ballard! She's blackmailing me! Mark Bishop, you're under arrest for the attempted murder of June Ballard and the rape and attempted murder of Jessica Hamilton. All right, I'll come quietly. Just don't kill me. If you found me, then McAvee's goons will too. Oh, we need, we need to get out of here. All right, but you stay close. Any tricks, and I'll save McAfee's boys the trouble. Follow me. I know another way out of this place. Christ, detective, they're trying to kill me. Last chance to back the hell down. It's this way. McAfee doesn't make the rules. You hear me? Kill them for God's sake! I don't want to die! There's no way out of here. I thought you said you knew where you were going. We have to jump for it. LAPD, you're making a... Kill a cop. And it's the Come electric on, chair. Really, the best McAfee's got? God, how many are there? Get him over here, I'll cover you! Come on, the cavalry's here! I don't want to die here. Oh, okay. Get him over here, I'll cover you! Come on, the cavalry's here! The Caffey doesn't make the rule. You hear me? Stay down. Ow. Ow. LAPD, you're making a big... Follow me. We need to get him to the car. Is this really the best McAfee's got? Get him to the car! I can cover you from here! You're almost there! 
Find some cover! Now this is what I call a result. Mark Bishop, erstwhile film producer, an all-around piece of shit, catches a fast ticket to Quentin for statue rape and attempted murder. So he gets to spend the next 15 years playing sissy instead of sticking it to little girls. That is justice for a capital J, Detective Phelps. You developed such a reputation, I'm not gonna be able to hold on to you any longer. You're getting promoted. Go on, get your new assignment. It was good working with you, son. Phelps, Bukowski, this your work? Can I help you, detective? Sorry, Cap, didn't see you there. Yeah, I'll bet you did. This is a traffic case. You need something? I'm here to buy a drink for the two LAPD traffic cops who broke the back of Guy McAfee's private army. You don't have a problem with that, do you, Captain? Go right ahead. Get in. I'm buying. You like jazz, Cole? The hopheads love it. Sure, I guess. Big bands and swing, I can understand, but this bebop palaver? How are you supposed to dance to that? This is Phelps, Leroy. Be nice to him. You'll like this place. They treat you right. Would you like a table, Roy? What do you think we want to do? Stand at the bar like I'll chumps? Get a table ready for you. Don't look so happy to see me, Alphonse. I might get the wrong impression. Cole, this is Alphonse. He's a French Negro from Africa. Can you beat that? The Congo. A pleasure to meet you, Alphonse. Is Elsa singing tonight? Yes, she is. She has the next set. Come on, Cole. You can meet Elsa while they're fixing us a table. You'll like her. She's something else. Maybe another night, Roy. She's pretty beat up about it. Get your hands off me. Don't ever tell me what to do or what not to do, Alphonse. You got a nice club here. Don't spoil it. If you will follow me, detectives. Just through the door. He was my only real friend, Harlan. We went through it all. Do you realize what he meant to me? Of course I do. You have no idea. You said it was construction work. It was an industrial accident, Elsa. How can I be held responsible? Elsa, are you going on? Louis, for God's sake, he was my best friend. The only man who ever loved me without putting his hands on me. Hi, Elsa. Here's someone I'd like you to meet. Cole Phelps, war hero and crime fighter extraordinaire. And why would I want to meet another fascist from the LAPD? Sorry about this, Cole. What an evening I'm having. First a Negro puts his hands on me, and then this. Who do you think you're talking to, you German junkie whore? Don't you ever forget your place with me again. Do you hear me? Evening, Doc. How's business? Sanguine. Louis, help me here. I'm gonna have to give her something before her performance. Blow it off, Cole. These artsy-fartsy types always get a little flighty. Meet Dr. Harlan Fontaine, doctor to the stars. Mr. Fix-It to the mental wreckage of Hollywood. So what about that drink, boys? Damn, I hate him.
You're my son. <laughs> now that we're on the next one, I'll be right back once I pause this. We are back. Gentlemen, take your seats. Let's get this over before lunch. Flight Rose of the Homicide Squad has decided to take early retirement. We will all miss Floyd and the steely edge he brought to his police work. The department has arranged a wee drink at the Galway Arms to quench the mighty thirst a man gets from 25 years of police work. Floyd's departure leaves a place at the top table. And the chief has seen fit to promote Cole Phelps from burglary to the homicide desk. Stand up, Phelps. Take a chair. You're in the major leagues now, Sonny. Rusty Galloway, a fine lawman of the old school, will be taking you under his wing. Your first case is the murder of a woman found last night and bearing all the signs of the werewolf. Get out to the scene, lads. Do you have the address? It's been all over KGPL. It's off Temple Street, between Belmont and Glendale. It's him, a cop from the newspaper.
What happened to Rose? Parker wants the Chief's job. Word is it's either going to be him or Thad Green. So they're both clearing the decks. So where does that leave you, Galloway? Leaves me saddled with a chump like you, Phelps. I didn't ask for you, and I don't want you, so keep it to yourself. See if you can learn something about seeing how a real cop operates. What did he mean by the werewolf? Medallia. The Daily News came out calling him the werewolf killer. The examiner came up with the black dahlia. Are any closer to catching him? Not a chance. Six months and hundreds of guys running down leads. We got... Nothing. You don't think this has anything to do with it? No, I don't. 90% of murders are domestic, Phelps. Some guy gets into a beef with his wife, he takes it too far. This will be the same. But cutting someone in half and leaving them off the sidewalk. Any central unit, car 16 out reports a possible jumper. I'll do it! So help me God, I'll jump! Go get your chair. There. Let me do the talking, detective. I know a ton of this psychology stuff. You take the back alley and find a way up there. Come on, Phelps, let's get moving. Are you jumping? Make sure you warn me before you do. I will! Oh. Wait, what? You think this thing can hold you, Rusty? I'll bring you down with me, Phelps. Come on, then. No offense, but I don't want you splashed on my shoes. Are, are you crazy? What are you trying to do? I remember my first jumper. Could have soaked him up with a sponge. I still can't eat spaghetti sauce. I... This what you wanted? I can't do it. I just... I'll come quietly, just... I need some help. Please. You gotta get me some help. You're a danger to yourself and to others. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're onto the homicide desk. You know the way. You can drive. We'll skip over to Hey, I appreciate you uh, watching. Um, appreciate you coming in, dude. Like, obviously, I'm a small time streamer, so. Not a lot, I don't get a lot of viewership, but it's kind of cool to see people come in. How about a scoop for the examiner, Galloway? You could use some good press. Another tramp, another message. Is the werewolf back in business, boys? Do you have a mother, asshole? A sister? How about showing some respect for this poor woman? Let us do our job, and Detective Galloway will give you a statement later. He's good, Rusty. He even sounds genuine. That's Phelps, guys. The war hero, defending the honor of murdered humps. They're used to it, Phelps. Moving along, guys. You got your pictures, you got your headlines. Now scram. <clears throat> yeah, every little bit helps, dude. So uh, share with your friends. Um, like. Obviously, like the stream, you know, it'll be on YouTube later. Trollman, this your beat? Yes, sir. Well, part of it. Kids park here, they use it like a lover's lane. It's a working neighborhood. Some trouble, but nothing like this. It's uh, known locally as the Moors. You were first on the scene? Yes, detective. No one's disturbed the body? No, sir. We cleared out them vulture reporters so Pinker and the coroner could work. They're waiting to talk to you. Go house to house and see what you come up with. Uh, there, mm, mm, I'm looking at something up there. 
There might be something here that uh, we don't want to see. So, just so we're aware. The victim's bag? Looks brand new. Can't be the one used on the body. Some kind of puzzle or parlor game. Bomba Club. Why steal a table lighter? Hmm. What can you tell me about the shoe prints? Men's size eights. Pinker lifted impressions for me to compare back at the lab. Cause of death? It could be the head injuries. She has been badly stomped. What caused the blunt force injury to the face? Could be anything from a baseball bat to a lug wrench. I'll have more details after the autopsy. This wound on the finger. Something removed, a ring most likely. I assume it was taken post-mortem. Hmm. Interesting. What's the writing on the victim mean? BD, like Dahlia, Tex. Your guess is as good as mine. Could be something to it, or it could be the killers trying to throw you off the scent. Either way, I'll run tests on the lipstick. Any idea of the time of death? From the temperature, I'd say after midnight. I'll confirm with you later. Can we get to the bomba? Man could die of thirst in a case like this. could die of thirst. It's like 10 o'clock in the morning. My money, 
copycat. We can't rule it out. We need to work the evidence. <laughs> it Love that, wouldn't you? A big head to hang on your wall. The caller of the decade. They've been working evidence on BD case for six months and got nicks. There's a difference, Russ. Oh, yeah? I just started working it today. Okay, odd shot. What? More likely. The werewolf comes back around, leaving us unknown in a corpse. He clearly has a thing for power. Power over women. Why not power over the police department as well? Let me finish, Phelps. A guy opens his mouth again after six months of stoom. For some opportunist who's been reading about the BD figures, he'll rip off the M.O. and get himself a freebie. That's not totally fantastical. You know, an exam in the Daily News might be good at coming up with monikers, but they're terrible for police work. There's a reason we didn't get the son of a bitch after the short murder it was them, locusts. Where do you think the werewolf killer is now? Uh, dead by his own hand, stationed somewhere else with the armed forces. San Quentin, another town, another country, who knows. So Phelps, I understand you want to turn this into a big case, but it doesn't work like that, all right? A case will come and find you. You can't make it something it ain't, understand? So you don't think the werewolf has continued to operate in the Los Angeles area? No chance. We would have found him. All units, officer detail, 211 and shots fired. 391 Broadway, Mallory's Cafe. I do all of these. I do all of these because you get an achievement if you do them all. going down without a fight. Drop the weapon, hands behind your head. Yeah? Fuck you too. God damn it, get after Put me. your hands in the air. He's hiding in the alley. Give it up, LAPD. He shimmied up a drain pipe. Don't make me chase you! Got him. He killed a cop. This is Car 11 King. Advise all units that the 211 from Mallory's Cafe is code 4, KGPL. Roger 11K, all units 211 from Mallory's Cafe is code 4. Repeat, code 4. You can drive.
air conditioned. Sam. Gentlemen, what can I get you? Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. Were you working here last night? Yes. How can I help, officer? You can start with your name. Garrett Mason. You're the regular bartender on nights? I'm a temporary barman. I work for an agency. I fill in at bars across town. Do you remember a woman who came in here last night? Uh, five feet seven, about 110 pounds, blonde hair, about 40 years of age. You mean Celine Henry? Yes. Do you know anything about her? I don't. But the owner, Mr. McCall, serves her most nights. Would you like to speak to him? I would. He sits at the back of the club. Where's the hibiscus? You can't miss him. Is there anything else? Inquire away, Phelps. Eggs. I'll stay here. I'm a little parched. Pour me three fingers of rye. I think he's a bit of a ganguero. But... Detective Phelps, LAPD. We're investigating the murder of Celine Henry. Do you know her? Celine? You going to pay for that? Christ. Sure I know her. She and I and House officer. Jacob, her husband, yes, we go way back. Sure. She was here last hey, night? Sure, she's a regular. Celine is, was a lovely woman. Was Mrs. Henry here with anyone last night? Not at first. Celine already had quite a head start. But she attracted attention? Certainly. A few gentlemen became very enamored with her and her stories. One guy in particular. You know him? No. He's been in a couple of times. Did they leave together? Yes. At around 11. If it helps, I made the guy's license plate. Say, honey, what time do you get off? I think this could be a great help, sir. Thank you. Mrs. Henry appeared to be missing a ring, torn from her finger, but not her wedding finger. Celine always wore a red garnet ring on the large side. Larger than life, like... Celine herself. Did she have it a long time? Sure. Since way back in her flying days. Did her husband buy it for her? No, it was, uh, it was before Jacob. I think you know where the ring came from, and I think you're going to tell me. Okay. I bought it years ago. I carried a torch for Celine in those days. Guess I always have. <laughs> but old man never knew about it. You know the husband? Sure I know Jacob. He was in the Corps. He met Celine on a furlough and married her when the war was finished. He put up with a load of shit. Hmm. Do you think he killed his wife? No. No, not in my opinion. So if it wasn't Jacob, then you probably let her out of here with the guy who killed her. How do you feel about that? Stole the attitude, will ya? I tried to get on to Jacob. I rang him up. Asked him to come pick her up, like usual. But he refused. And she picked some night to push him over the edge. I rang him back around 11.30, but I got no answer. Thanks, Mr. McColl. You've been a big help. One more thing. Would you have an address for Celine? 142 North Union Avenue. God knows I had to send her home in enough cabs to remember that. What, baby? <coughs> my eggs were runny. Who drove me up to my house? Let's get out of here. Hey, what's the hurry? My stool was just starting to warm up nicely. Where's that goddamn Operator, give me R and I. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, Detective? 
I need a registered owner on a license plate, 2-boy-8899. Yes, detective. I'll need to contact the DMV. Shall I relay the details via KGPL? Please. Thanks, ma'am. Sam has taken me to Palm Springs for the weekend. You find the booze helps you get through a working day? Sharp is my investigatory instincts, Phelps. A smart lawyer might use... that to throw out anything you collect today. A smart man might know it's unwise to stand between the patient and his medicine. As long as you're not falling over, Rusty, I'll let it slide. <laughs> That's mighty kind of you, Phelps. You know, you picked the wrong job if a healthy thirst offends you, Cole. We owe it to this city to do the best we can in this position. As homicide detectives, that responsibility is all the more serious. And always the politician. It's not political, it's practical. Maybe the men combing Hollywood Boulevard after the Elizabeth Short murder were more interested in sniffing out booze than the clues that would have led to her killer. Yeah, well, if only you'd been there, choir boy. Betty Short would be alive, the Japs would have spared Pearl Harbor, our ancestors wouldn't have tasted the forbidden fruit. Minor syntactical error, Detective Galloway. I never claimed to be able to prevent crimes. I only suggested a proficiency in solving them. Guess that's the drink slowing you down. Oh my god, brother, oh brother. Worse than I could ever have imagined. Calling all cars. Citizen reports. Officer needs help. Shots fired. Officer down. 6th Street and Lindley Place. 6th Street and Lindley Place. Unit to handle code 3. Identify. Watch where you're driving, you maniac! Okay. Okay. I had my siren on. He turned right in front of me. That alleyway leads to the rear of the building, sir. Someone's gonna have to climb up and take him down. Good luck. Don't let him get a beat on you like I did. Get over here, will you? This isn't as much as oh. You 
like killing cops? Ah! Won't help console the officer's family, but these guys are done. You're behind the wheel. I mean, I went to the back to go get the Tommy gun. Cause screw that. <sighs> A 46 Packard, only 22.90. Oh my goodness. <laughs> What one of them is doing it worth now? Bruh. I'll try the back door. Wait here a second. Side window's been jimmied. Looks like somebody's creeped the joint. Family burnt to death. Oh, boy. You said I had to go back, doctor. The fires are cathartic. They allow you to confront your past. You said the house would be empty. Are you taking the medication I have prescribed? You said the house would be empty. I heard them screaming. The circumstances were unfortunate. My colleagues had made all the necessary arrangements. You said the house would be empty. You're killing me. The deaths were unfortunate. But you have dealt with death before. You said the house would be empty! How can I find peace? Carter. Knock it off, buddy. That guy killed him. That's nice. Size nines, above average for a lady. What does that say? Can more avenue resins burns to ground. Burglar used the pry bar. Why did you kick the door in? You think I'm going to climb through a broken window in a $30 suit? You got another thing coming, Buster. <laughs> Celine and Jacob are obviously having problems. It speaks to motive. Crime scene evidence still weighs against it being the husband, but Jacob could give us something to go on. One of my exes drank like this, you'd be feeling the back of my hand. Call in burglary and get technical services out here. I'll talk to the neighbors. 
Don't take all day about it, Phelps. I get nasty when I'm thirsty. Galloway, homicide, badge number 564. Yeah. Regular Kevin Amelia Earhart, Earhart her day. At 142 the ring looks June. distinctive. Yeah. Tiffany? The rest of this stuff is junk. Might explain the missing ring. LAPD, are you acquainted with Celine Henry, Miss Horgan? Jennifer Horgan. I've known Celine for more than ten years. Our children Harder, grew up together. Down, bud. What's going on, officer? Did you see Mrs. Henry <sighs> go out last night? Well, I'm no busybody, you right. understand, but Celine had been drinking, and she and poor long-suffering Jacob had a terrible row. I think Jacob may have given her a black eye. He stormed out, and she went back inside. Did he come back? No. Celine was listening to music and shouting until she left around 10 p.m. She was very drunk to have been driving. But she is not the sort of person you can stop from doing something when her dander is up. What is this about, officer? Is Celine all right? I'm afraid Mrs. Henry has been murdered, ma'am. Murdered? Mm. Oh, my God. I'm afraid I need to go and, and sit down. Marital problems. No shit. Let's see what Jacob has to say for himself. I don't think Jacob is our man, but we should see what he has to say. Jacob Henry had a violent argument with his wife last night. He's looking more and more likely. Ah, uh, for my money, if the broad keeps the house looking like that, she probably deserved it. The skipper says bring him in. We'll keep the hacks off our backs for a while. Fine by me. So it ain't the werewolf killer after all. Good to see you've come to your senses, Cole. I always said work the evidence. I only stipulated a connection to the BD killer as an avenue of investigation we should leave open. And as far as I'm concerned, it still is. Okay, Phelps, we go in hard. You follow my lead. You Jacob Henry? Yeah. Who's asking? LAPD. You're under arrest for the murder of your wife, Celine Henry. Murder? Celine? Save the dramatics oh, oh my for God. RKO, pal. You got bigger problems. What the hell are you talking about? You you come in here, you, you tell me that Celine is... Take a seat, Mr. Henry. That she's... We're going to have a look around, I... then we'll talk. Jesus, I'm sorry. I... I get even the slightest hint that you're a flight risk, pal. <laughs> You think the atmosphere's thick in here? Wait till you try to gas The 
the oldest problem there is, what to do about the old lady. Hmm. Size 11s. So who could have killed Celine? Where did she go last night, Jacob? A bar, I suppose. Look, I don't know. You know where she went, yeah, Jacob. You're lying. you're lying. Why would I help you if you keep lying to me? Look, I'm telling you, I don't know. The guy told me no. Mm -mm. Yeah. We know she went to the Bomba Club. The bartender there, he, he calls me if things are getting out of hand, and I go, and I bring her home. He called me last night, and I said no. Phone rang a couple more times after that. I ignored it. I'm going to have to live with that. When did you last see your wife, Mr. Henry? Last night. Uh, I went to see her. We talked. Things got a little out of hand. I left. You don't remember what time you last saw your wife alive? Look, I'm sorry. I left. Maybe 9 p.m. Might have been a little later, but right around nine. Why did you kill her, Jacob? Things will go better if you come clean about it. That's a lousy thing to say. I never gave up on my wife. I don't believe you, Jacob. I think you didn't have the guts to do it yourself, so you had someone else do it. You want to back that up with something, Big Mouth? Huh? You have a death threat note? The note by the phone suggests you meant her harm. You want the truth? Truth is, I was sick to death of her. I was... Trying to have her committed. We're still going to need you to come downtown, Mr. Henry. We can get this all down on paper, Jacob. How you got fed up with your wife and how you figured killing her would bury all your troubles. Kill my own wife? She was a loss and a tramp, and you just couldn't stand it anymore. Shut your goddamn mouth. <laughs> so now you're going to tell me you loved her? Ah, the DA goes all gooey over remorse, Jacob. <laughs> okay. Call it in and get a squad car dispatched. And check for messages. I'll keep old Slugger here company. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Cole Phelps, batch 1247. Guy, okay. hit me. I need a patrol unit to transport a suspect back to Central. Certainly, Detective. You have a message from the coroner. Do you wish to be put through? Yes, ma'am. Carruthers. It's Phelps. I've completed the autopsy. Several wounds to the head from a blunt metal instrument. Closest match would be a socket wrench handle. So the cause of death was the blunt... No, the blows to the head, surprisingly, were not fatal. Death was from hemorrhage and shock from the fractured ribs and multiple injuries caused by the stomping. Anything else? He's some kind of sex fiend. The tissue 
surface of the anus were bruised about one eighth of an inch, but no trace of semen in the anus, vagina, or stomach. Thanks, Doc. Operator, give me R and I. Any word on an owner for that vehicle? License was two boy eight eight nine nine. Yes, detective. The plate belongs to a brown 1936 Pontiac. Registered owner is one Alonzo Mendez of 402 South Fremont Street, apartment 16. Thanks. Any other messages? One, detective, from Captain Donnelly. He wants any and all suspects returned to Central. Interviews to be set up immediately. Got it. We're coming in. said she took a real pounding. Maybe if he had been a little firmer in the beginning, he wouldn't be in this situation now. I imagine that Neanderthal routine is a big hit with the ladies, Galloway. Women love me. <laughs> Fenbar. So, yeah. <laughs> I have no complexity. They know exactly what they're going to get. <laughs> uh, so you've obviously played this before. Oh, God. Watch it, will you? Whoa, if someone reports this. All units in the vicinity in any central unit. 211 and shots fired at 410 South Flower Street. Yeah, I uh I have played to do this one, but it was the old one on the 360, so this is actually different. There's some stuff that's been different with this. Here. That's the guy from the Must be bugged. Let's turn around. We'll just drive down the street a little bit and then we'll turn around. But yeah, I uh yeah, I played this when I was on the three sixty um and then, yeah, I'm replaying it again, so. All units in the vicinity again. There we go. Tables have turned now, haven't they, boys? Hey, look, old man, we're sorry. Just quit shooting. The hell I will. I'm getting pretty tired of losing my weekly take to you punks. It ain't gonna last long in a tin shack. God damn it, they went down there. Oh, this is a 
$30 suit. This is car 11K. Shots fired at South Flower Street, Scott's Garage. It's code four here, but suspect is down. I need an ambulance and coroner. 11K, Roger, on the ambulance and coroner. All units, 11K reports code four on the shooting at 410 South Flower Street, Scott's Garage, code four. <laughs> Calm down! We have a firm lead, Captain. Are you questioning my judgment, Cole Phelps? No, sir. Good. I thought not. Jacob Henry is a subsister pushed around by his wife. I think with the right kind of persuasion, he might be prepared to seek absolution. Are you prepared to show him the error of his ways, young Phelps? I don't think he's our man. Galloway agrees with me. Don't drag me into this. Rusty is a practical policeman. A bird in hand is always worth two in the bush. Let's liberate a confession from poor Jacob and the public will sleep easier tonight. Run along now, Phelps. I've warmed them up nicely for you. Doesn't look good, Jacob. You're in a big jam here. You lie to me and I can't help you out. Do you understand me? Yes. What do you do for work, Jacob? I'm a mechanic. Engines, differentials, transmissions, that kind of stuff. So you have access to tools? Yes, I do. Your wife was brutally beaten with a socket wrench handle, then stomped to death. How do you think that looks, Jacob? I, I was home in bed. You're full of shit, oh, you Jacob. Weren't. The truth is, you hated that bitch. You followed her and dragged her into the car and then took her out to the moors. She woke up and you smashed her face in with a socket No. Bitch. No, 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 no. And then you stomped no. her. You stomped her because she's a drunken whore and she treated you like shit. You stomped her for all the years you had to take it. You stomped her because you are such a weak fucking sister, Jacob, and you wanted to erase all memory of it. Go on. Try to deny it. I was at home. I should have gone to her at the bar, but I didn't. You can't prove I wasn't home. I can. The bar owner, McCall, gave you up. He called your house right at the time that someone was smashing Celine's skull in and got no answer. If we find that socket wrench, you're going to fry. Get it off your chest. Tell me you killed her. I killed her, all right. I killed her dreams. She was an aviator, famous in her day, flying around up there like a bird. But she never wanted to come back down. 
You know, my pop was a sod farmer, dirt poor. I joined the Corps, trained to be a mechanic. I did better than my father did. I worked hard for it. It's all you can ask of a man. But Celine, she never wanted to come down from the clouds. She wanted everything I couldn't give her. All I had was security. That was never going to be enough. You did it. Everything points to you. What does text mean, Jacob? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I need a reason to believe you, Jacob. You want a confession? That's what you want? That's exactly what we want. Seems to me there are two types of marriages. First, where the couple love each other equally and everything's roses. And then there's the other, where one person loves the other more than life itself and always puts them first. Chumps like me, who love them no matter what, no matter how badly they behave. That's it. That's my confession. I love my wife. And I'll take any test you got to prove it. Your marriage was over. You took her in and she threw it back in your face. You didn't go over there to hurt her. It just got out of hand. It's not how it was. You're lying, Jacob. It was falling apart and things uh, got violent. I'm not lying. I'm telling you how it was. The neighbor. Jenny Horgan says you blackened her eye. It's all right, Jacob. DA will understand. In your shoes, I would have done exactly the same thing. I hit her, all right? I'm not proud of it, but she was coming at me with a frying pan. What would you do? I took it for years, but sometimes a man can only take so much. Why did you break into your wife's house, Jacob? Why steal the ring? What? What are you talking about? I've got a key. Why would I need to break in? You took the ring because you found out who gave it to her. What are you talking about? Her prized garnet ring, given to her by her old boyfriend, Dick McCall. I never knew that. I lived with that woman for three years, and I never knew that. In that case, I think you should be talking to Dick McCall. We'll do the detective work, Lunkhead. Just answer the questions. I'll see what I can do for you, Jacob. But I'm not promising. It still looks bad for you. Phelps! You failed me, son. We have another lead, Captain. This guy Mendez could be our man. I hope so, Phelps. I really hope so. I'm deeply disturbed by your style of police work. We can still pull down a conviction for the skipper if we chase down this Mendez guy. Alonzo Mendez. Sound like a man who moonlights as the werewolf? Don't sound like a man I'd let my daughter anywhere near. You've got a daughter. Spend enough time drinking, Cole, you'll find yourself with any number of things you don't want when you're sober. So that's why you never sober up. Exactly. Whoa! <laughs> Citizen reports a man with a gun 
Please, you've got to call for help. He doesn't look real good. Quick, what happened? Some punk held up my stand. This guy tried to help and got a bullet for his trouble. He got hit and hightailed it through the parking lot. Get going! Shoot out his tires. Wish me luck. Phelps, you gotta get me closer. You come any closer, I'll pull the trigger. Put the weapon down now. You fucking ass for it. I missed it. Please, you've got to call for help. He doesn't look real good. Quick, what happened? Some punk held up my stand. This guy tried to help and got a bullet for his trouble. He got hit and hightailed it through the parking lot. Get going! Sleep on me. Get me back in close. What the hell? What are you waiting for, Phelps? Up and at him. I'll hold up here, Phelps. Car 11K calling KGPL. Shots fired. Suspect is down. We're code 4, but I need an ambulance on Grand between 4th and 5th Streets. 11K, Roger on your ambulance. All units be advised the suspect is down on Grand between 4th and 5th Streets. Repeat, the suspect is down. Code 4. It's against the rules to drive like this without a siren. You're one for rules there, Fenbar. Mendez, apartment 16.
Don't bother knocking, just kick the door in. Take a look around and see what you can find. This is going to help us. Brothers could match the color and brand of the body. Size eights could help place Mendez at the scene. Consistent with Celine's injuries, and the blood can be typed. We have the murder weapon. We better get Pinker down here. Why keep it? Why not throw it away? You think these clowns are geniuses? Thank your stars you caught a break. Captain Donald will begin to like you. Hey, what gives? LAPD, you're under arrest. Do not lose that son of a bitch. I'll go get our wheels. Mendez, stop right there. Do this, Alonzo. Get in and drive. Asshole off the road. Hit him, Cole. Spit him out. Keep it steady, and I'll try to bust his tires. You're under arrest for the murder of Celine Henry. Saying a goddamn thing. You did a grand job, lads. Phelps, that's quite a way to acquit yourself in your first outing as a homicide investigator. It seems the city has a new and vengeful guardian. Considering the evidence against your suspect, and the thoroughness with which a report was compiled, I foresee a safe passage through the courts, and the DA agrees with me. Brutality on a scale such as this deserves retribution. The people and the press of this city demand it. A lot of property damage there. <laughs> All right. BM215 Neo. Drop me a follow, dude. I will be getting on later. I'll be playing more.
Uh, I'm just going to take a break and probably eat. So I will take a break and then get back on later. Um, if you want to drop me a follow, I'll be back on later, buddy. Yeah, four star is not great, but... <laughs> Like I said, I'm going to pop off, so hit me up or uh, drop a follow. I will be on in a little bit, and we'll go from there. So I'll catch you guys later.